exploited. So we became renewable energy champions and renewable energy testers. This is the only PowerPoint, which you probably can't read, but this became the mission, that we would inspire young people, test and promote renewable energy, build education stations all over the world to support teachers, explore a clean energy mix, because wind and solar will not power our planet for a w quite a long time, and undertake a voyage on our yacht around the world uh, in the voyage for cleaner energy. Could we one day build the first ever education station in Antarctica only running on renewable energy every year? And as Marie said, we've just come back 2015, uh, only a few weeks ago from Antarctica. We get together at the bottom of South America. Um, why I don't quite look English colored, by the way, is that I've just lived for the last three and a half, nearly four years in India do you realize that there are more people in Bombay, one city in India, five times the population of Norway is in Bombay? 1.4 million people in total in the whole of India. So uh, we have a great focus on India, take some great young people from India, great young people from China, top class universities, top class young entrepreneurs, great people. And I'm really proud, and I know that tomorrow is a big day on the, the, the whole issue of, of women and supporting women. Well, my mum gave me some damn good advice when I was about 16. She said, Rob, if you want to do all these crazy things you keep talking about, understand, Rob, that women have the power. And I have understood that. We have a team of five people, four are women, and just me is sent around the world to do talking, and that's it. And I've tried really hard over the last four years, and we've involved 60 women from the Middle East coming from countries to, Ant to Antarctica for the first time. If you think it's hard work walking to both poles, try getting a Saudi girl to come to Antarctica on her own. Not easy, but we've had the firsts from first women ever to come to Antarctica from the UAE, from Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and they've gone back as great champions. And this year we had, uh, there's Marie in the background, that's how I'm used to seeing her, not this rather fabulous vision we have here, but we were in Antarctica and thanks to Partnership for Change, we took the first lady ever, Poo is her name, uh, from Myanmar, uh, former Burma. And she is a teacher, came down, did a fantastic job, and has gone back, rock and roll, fantastic girl, doing a great job in that, in that country. Uh, we did a good job there. And Antarctica is just a special place, it really is. And as you all know, you know we, we know Antarctica's breaking up. We go and see where it's breaking up. And if you go somewhere every year, as I do, year after year after year, you see how much it's changing. And this was terrifying. The day after we left Antarctica, this very spot, the record hottest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica was recorded at this place we'd just left. 17.5 degrees Celsius in Antarctica. Unheard of, we need to listen to that. We've built our education station in Antarctica, we're very proud of it, runs on renewable energy. I had to give my house a long time ago to the bank manager, so my only home really is in Antarctica. This is, girls, check out the plastic flowers, efforts are made. Um, and this whole base uh, runs only on renewable energy in Antarctica. Uh, we've done any yachts, women or men here, we've done 219,000 miles in our yacht around the world, uh, showing young people, not sending them a text or an email, but showing them how renewable energy works, a solar panel sale, uh, testing out different types of fuels in our engine. Uh, and anybody from India here? I love India. Jolly good country. And to be relevant in India, uh, I spent most of the last three years on a bicycle going around India, visiting lots of schools. Uh, we've built an education station at a tiger reserve in India. We've built another education station in the Himalayas. It looks a bit nicer than that normally. Um, but
but uh, gave a family their first ever electric light from solar up in the Himalayas, built an education station in uh, the United States of America. Um, and finally, things were going pretty well in my life, actually. You know, I'm 58 years of age now and looking forward to a more comfortable existence, perhaps, until NASA told us all, told us all, that the ice shelves of Antarctica, the bottom one is the Ross Ice Shelf, across which Amundsen, Scott, Shackleton, and ourselves in a small way crossed, and the top one is the Filchner Ice Shelf. The bottom one there is bigger, th bigger than the size of France. So these are big ice shelves floating on the surface of the ocean. And NASA have measured, not told us, oh, well, climate change is that. They've measured the fact that these things are disintegrating, which will release an area of ice about the size of the United States of America to come into the ocean much faster and will, according to NASA, raise the sea level around the world by about three feet in the next hundred years, which is the same time my mum's been on the planet. Now, we all have heard of this, but part of our problem, all of us, is that we're, maybe we're just hearing so much of this, it's hard to respond uh, to that challenge. And in our, only small, uh, uh, in our very small way, uh, we're, we're going back one last time. I, I hope this is the last time. Um, over the next couple of years, we've got the South Pole Energy Challenge, which we're going to go back to the South Pole and retrace our steps of 30 years ago. Uh, but this time, we're going to survive only on renewable energy. As all you people know, you've got to melt ice and snow to drink or you die. And for years, we've all used jet aviation fuel. Now we're going to go for solar. This has required incredible, incredible research. It, I thought it would be easy. It's taken three years to find the right solar panels, the right ice melting equipment uh, on Marie's expedition, we went and tested it out, and bless his heart, which means a lot to me, my son uh, has actually volunteered to come and march side by side with his father on this expedition, so we're relevant to young people. And Kyle, who you'll be hearing from tomorrow, who's here, Kyle has been working with us for 10 years in Antarctica, and he um, is speaking tomorrow on storytelling for change, certainly worth listening to him. He's fantastic. He'll be coming to make the film. And how we're going to do this is in two stages. Uh, first stage is at the end of this year, we're going to go to 97 miles from the South Pole, where Sir Ernest Shackleton turned back in 1909 on his journey. And we're going to make that journey as a test of all, our, all of our equipment and arrive at the South Pole on the 30th anniversary of when we arrived all those years ago. And the second part will be to make the whole journey of 1,600 kilometers. As Marie said right at the beginning, you know, these words matter. And I do ask you to go away in a very, very privileged country. You are very privileged here and very lucky. And I ask you to go away and just do one thing extra. Uh, I'm willing to go and get cold again, so I hope you all go away, uh, have a fabulous time, and uh, good luck to you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>